got those Tishy G here back with another Tishy G video for you guys. In this video we are gonna explore quite the obscure deck, it's Necros by GX Weaver. Why is this deck really great to play with? Well, it all the yeah revolves around damage spread. And this Black Ray GX with Necrozma has a lot of potential here. We deal a 100 damage to every EX and GX on the opponent's side of the field. In combination with SP on EX and the capability of using Miraculous Shine to devolve the highest stage of every evolution Pokemon on the opponent's side of the field, we can get multiple knockouts and leave the opponent in an awkward situation. The Flying Flip Tapu Koko promo also helps us out with dealing 20 damage to everything on the opponent's side of the field. In combination with that, we also have a 3-3 line of Weavile. Rule of Evil deals 60 damage to every Pokemon that has an ability, both yours and your opponent's. I know we also get 60 damage, but the main thing here is to strike the opponent. So uh, in the early game, together with a combo with Wally, -E, we can get a lot of damage on really early in the game. We also run a 2-2 line of Hunchcrow, sometimes the Raven's Claw comes in like a boss and destroys everything in one shot once we spread around a lot of damage. Those are the main attackers and uh, we also have Tapu Lele in here because yeah, every deck needs that consistency and with Tapu Lele we get our first turn Bridget or first turn Wally depending on our hand and the opponent's side of the field. Another great card I like in this deck is Potown. It deals 30 damage, uh, actually it deals you put 3 damage counters on a Pokemon that evolves. Both yours and your opponents, opponents again but yeah, our weak Pokemon die in one shot. Anyhow, well the opponent, uh, they get damage counters. Let's think about some options here. You face an Alolan Ninetales deck, they get 3 damage counters. You use a flying flip two times and bam, you can devolve them with Espeon. Really great, it works as well with uh, matchups like Guard of War GX and uh, others like that. Another great card in this deck is Multi Switch. You know, you might think, why is he running Multi Switch? That card sucks. Well, to prove you wrong, I'm gonna have a hypothetical situation here. Our Tapu Koko fly uses flying flip on the first turn. Yeah, great like that because we started second. We can start using it first. And then we use Flying Flip. Next turn, we retreat our Tapu Koko into a Necrozma. We use Multi Switch to get the DCE onto Necrozma, attach a basic darkness energy, and out of nowhere, on our second attacking turn, bang, we use Black Ray GX. So that's why one copy of Multi Switch is in here. We're running two choice ban. I maybe added up to three if you uh, prefer dealing more damage, but spreading around is the main key here. Uh, Float Stone is also great. And also a thing I should mention here is if Pokemon are weak to lightning, let's say Ho-Oh, GX for example, you can uh, yeah deal super effective damage with choice ban and the flying flip to deal a lot of damage. So just to get it out there. Some disruption here and there, two crushing hammers, one enhanced hammer. For the energies, 12 is the perfect number to get it going. And this is the deck we're gonna play with today, so hopefully you guys are stoked for this kind of, yeah, unique deck to spread around damage. Okay, hopefully the opponent has a skilled deck that we can play against. We're facing a fighting psychic water lightning deck against Marcelo1717. Okay, he has a Fennekin coin. We lost the coin flip. Oh no, this is gonna be one of those videos where everything goes the opponent's way. Anyhow, we start with a flying flip type of Coco, so starting second, as mentioned, is not as bad as it seems. The good thing is we can start using a lot of flying flips if he benches a lot of Pokemon. So hopefully he uses first turn Bridget. We see Sudowoodoo. Okay. Sudowoodoo with roadblock makes makes it so we only can have four base uh, bench Pokemon. He uses an N, which is kind of sad to see because we had that DCE in the hand. Now we have to hope that we draw into it again. And we draw into it again. Okay. Haven't said anything. And the opponent skips a turn. Yeah. He does not have resistance, which is awesome. We are gonna get our Sneasel out. Uh, we're gonna get that DCE onto Tapu Koko, of course. We're gonna... Yeah, get that Potown slapping it down. Gonna get that choice bank going on. The cross my GX and boom, we're gonna Sycamore. So that was a great start for us. We're only uh, yeah, able to deal 20 damage though in this turn. But next turn we do however have, I'm not gonna bench that Sneasel just because we need room for Tapu uh, Lele. And uh, in this situation, Bridget is the only card we have so we can at least fill our bench next turn. So for this time, there's going to be a flying flip for 20 damage. Oh, that's who the voodoo. What is he gonna do? He does not have any energies, so it seems. He has this Tapu Lele, so uh, hopefully he's gonna use Bridget. Gives us some more uh, room here to do a lot of stuff. We can use Rule of Evil next turn, because with that we deal 60 damage to everything that has an ability, both uh, yeah, the opponent's Pokemon. So uh, yeah, we have Necrozma in place, so that is not the best strategy here. He's gonna use End, so... He must not have a great hand. He has a... 
He's gonna use two ends in a row. Fine by us. Come on, bench something, man. Something good. Let it be... Mm, yeah, I don't even know what deck I'm facing. Okay, it's full picks. I think it's the, the top senior deck at Worlds also uses something similar like that. Some decks here and there with Alolan, Ninetales. Okay, Octillery and the discard. Fine by me. Crushing Hammer is at our disposal. Yeah, another Vulpix. This is great. We're gonna spread around a lot of damage. And now we need to get our, our Hunch Crow because Ninetales does have a high amount of HP. I think it's 210. Kind of hard to beat. Okay, Beacon. But if he gets out his GXs in the Crossmo, we'll show him the way and destroy him. Okay, he gets out two Pokemon, but we're gonna end him anyhow. We have a Murkrow. Murkrow is great. We're gonna get that DCE going on. The bad thing is that a little Ninetales can do some weird kind of shenanigans. Maybe we can get a DCE to Hunchko. How much damage will we be able to deal now? 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. Still not enough. Gonna give it to the Necrozma for now. Uh, yeah, and there's nothing else we can do. We can bench a Tapu Lele. But we're just gonna end. That way the opponent does not bench all his ridiculous stuff here. And Hunchko is in the house. Cool to know. Can get an Ultra Ball out to get something that we want. Espion can be kind of the surprise, but I'm gonna leave that for next turn. Floatstone, also gonna keep that if the opponent tries to stall me. For now, another flying flip. And there we go. We're already spreading a lot of damage going on. Hunchcrow is able to deal 110 damage. If he evolves, we get an extra 30 damage. Potown is in town. So Aqua Patch is coming true to that Vulpix. If it evolves into a Lolan Vulpix, actually a Lolan Ninetales GX, we're gonna use Necrozma and spread some more damage. Although the Ninetales uh, can use its Ice Pad GX to throw all the damage on us. So we'll have to be careful here. So another Pokemon coming down. It is Remoraid, another one of those targets. I cannot promise you guys that we will win, but the board position looks kind of neat, in my opinion. So an end coming down, the opponent gets six cards, while that uh, Volpix is still in the active position. We got a Crushing Hammer, we got a DCE, we got Weavile. Weavile can deal 60 damage to, yeah, can knock out Sudowoodo and deal 60 damage to Tapu Lele. But then we leave our across my GX weakened. Okay, Beacon coming once again. We do have an end to, uh, yeah, overcome that. Okay. We're not gonna use Wally, we're gonna end him once again. We have our Hunchcrow. Hunchcrow will be able to deal a huge amount of damage, even though we get damage on ourselves. Does not even matter. We're gonna use the crushing hammer here. It fails. Hooray! Gonna leave that floatstone in the hand. We can attach it, but then again, he can use float uh, field blower. We're gonna yeah, maybe draw into it. Also gonna evolve into Weavile. So our Darkness Pokemon are set up for now. We did, however, receive a lot of damage, but whatever. There's nothing you can do about that. We get, yeah, Gosma, Gosma, Sycamore to Ultra Ball. Ultra Ball is great. That way we can get anything we want with Tapu Lele. We're gonna leave that for now. Also, uh, the Espeon can get a, uh, can show an appearance here. Sudowoodoo is definitely causing a lot of trouble. We're, yeah, limited with bench space. So in this situation, a hard hunch crow will be able to deal a bazillion damage. Everything that comes our path can be destroyed with Raven's Claw. So one knight is coming up. Okay, we can devolve that guy. I think he will be able to destroy my Tapu Koko. Or will he? He's gonna use the Ice Pad GX, probably. Presumably, so 70 damage, 90, 90 plus 60, 150. 190, 230, minus 70. We're not gonna get there. If we use this Ice Pad GX, we cannot one shot with Honchko. But then again, if he uses that, we can use that Black Ray GX instead. I would love to use another Tapu Koko damage spread. It stacks up a lot. So you see, you don't need a lot of energies. All my DCEs are attached though, so if he has something like an enhanced hammer, he has a lot of choice. 
And there it goes, another M. So still no prize cards have been taken. So this match is still undecided. We have a crushing hammer, a bunch of basic Pokemon, and another end. Field blower, what I expected. So, uh, yeah, lucky for us, we didn't attach that uh, float stone. So uh, sometimes you learn a thing or two if you play a couple of matches and then you say, ah, I'm not gonna attach my float stone. Rescue stretcher gets himself Octillery. Octillery gives them a uh, yeah, great solution to our end card that we still have in the hand. That will be three ends in a row. How cool is that? Aqua Patch, that Ninetales looks scary. He's gonna draw some cards with Octillery. Probably get himself the Floatstone or Energy and getting the Alolan Vulpix out of the active position to strike with Alolan Ninetales. Okay. Okay, whatever you want, man. This guy can also just barely survive when we use Rule of Evil. The thing I want to do here is sacrifice our Necrozma, so that way we can use Rule of Evil to destroy everything on the opponent's side. This dies, this dies, this one as well. So wow, another Vulpix showing its face. What will be the decision here? How many energies? He still has a lot of energies left in his deck. He only placed three on the field. Presumably, I think there are still nine energies in his deck, so having an energy right now is, yeah. Wow, a little of nine tails, maybe a DCE. Okay, he skips the turn. What can we do? We can definitely get rid of all those energies on the opponent's side. That is what we're gonna do today. We're gonna get rid of, uh, yeah, Weavile and Schneasel. I'm not gonna use all of these guys. And we are gonna get out our boy yeah, we can devolve everyone, not that that will matter. I think Guzma it up is a little bit better. So, Tapu Lady for the Guzma. Yes. Bridget did not even matter in this situation. Sudowoodoo really screwed us over with that part. So, Guzma it up. This Ninetales. And we are gonna go with our Hunchcrow. We could also use the Necrozma later. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna give an energy to Necrozma. Sometimes we can just get out 100 damage on those GXs. Raven's Claw, Hunchcrow, 240 damage. So as you see, we're facing a World Championship deck and we're just sitting here with our spreading damage deck and still having an awesome time. Still, uh, yeah, getting the first two prize cards. And the opponent lost all his energies. So he was kind of weakened in that situation. It was like, there was a huge sign on that Alola Nigel saying like, please hit me, I uh, want to die. And that's what happened here. Never leave something with that many energies on the field. <laughs> yeah, man, the Crossma is also kind of the target. So the good thing is that he does not concede immediately. He uses a Bizal hand. And uh, yeah, what else can we see? Tapu Lele can destroy our Hunchkow if he has a DCE. What is something? I think he will definitely do that. So our bar position looks really great. We also have the Enhanced Hammer and Crushing Hammer to follow up with his energy attachments. I think there's another beacon coming our way. Whatever. That beacon does not do anything. We don't have the float stone though. We have an end, so at least that is comfortable. That's the only thing we can do at the moment. We are gonna end. Hopefully we draw into something better than this. Mmm, Sycamore and Energies. I think I already have Energies enough. I'm gonna give an Energy to that Lele for the sake of it. <laughs> it does not even matter. And in a board position like this, it does not even matter. We could have attached an Energy to Hunchko and used the Tapu Koku Flying Flip. But then again, yeah, maybe that could have been the play here. But I'm gonna get an, an extra prize card with Raven's Claw. <sighs> Next turn we can even get out our Espeon. Since the mat does not always work out, if you if devolve Pokemon with Espeon EX, uh, that way you only get one prize card. So no two prize cards, so maybe with uh, the prize mat it will work out a little bit better. If we get a, yeah, Choice Band, that way we can destroy Tapu Lele with our Necrozma. So Guzma and Choice Band is something we need. 
there's only already one choice man in the discard hope. Mallow. Oh wow, the Mallow Octillery combo. Seeing it here on my channel. And this is something I already uh, yeah, told, talked about before. Using Mellow and then drawing the card with uh, the Abyssal Hand. Really great combo. Also works out with the uh, Gallade and the Gardevoir GX deck. So Abyssal Hand gets him the cards that he wants. Probably two Aqua Patches and something to follow up with that. I don't know. Let's just see what he gets. Aqua Patch number one. On the way. Aqua Patch number two. On the way the way okay he just retreats gonna give an extra energy I don't know let's see can use ice pad GX <laughs> ice pad GX really is that what you're gonna do okay there's one lone Vulpex gonna slap down my po town and now in this situation we only do 60 100 120 not enough damage Sycamore could work out. Let's use Field Blower on those guys with the Float Stones. Yeah, those guys. Or actually, this Ninetales might destroy my Necrozma, so... Yeah, I gotta get rid of that. Let's do it like this. We can attach an energy. That is something we can do, but I think everybody has efficient energies enough. 100 damage on everything. I'm actually gonna give an energy to Hunchcrow. That way we can retreat without using Float Stone. And of course, we're gonna draw into the Float Stone. No, not at all. And we're actually really screwed with the end here. So we're gonna get rid of two Schneezels. Or actually, those guys. And we're gonna get rid of our. Gonna get our Espeon EX out. That way we don't. We maybe draw into it more eff efficiently. Now we can uh, retreat. We can spread damage to everything, or we can deal 100 damage to the EX, or actually the GX is in the on the field. I'm gonna show Necrozma here, another card from Burning Shadows, Black Ray GX. <laughs> wow, we're dealing a lot of damage. Hunchcrow's damage output is insane at the moment, so maybe he's gonna use uh, the I the attack here, Ice Blade on our Hunchcrow. Which will be the correct play here, but we have our Espeon by our side, we can devolve this uh, guy with a lot of energies, get an extra prize card, follow it up with something else. An extra energy, does he have the choice band or the Kukui or the who know what? Yeah, those are the uh, actually only things that can uh, up the damage here. Does he have the choice band? I already see uh, three of choice bands in the discard pile, so I don't think my Necrozma GX will die in a situation like this unless he runs Professor Kukui. And I've seen no Kukuis inside so far. Okay, great game. So glad I can showcase it. Showcase it. Necrozma <laughs> did not even use Rule of Evil, but Rule of Evil can be used to get ourselves the last two prize cards with, uh, yeah. 1 energy, 60 damage on everything with an ability. So actually, if we use uh, a Rule of Evil, we win the game. Just like that. And that will be the case here. I'm gonna hopefully draw into an energy and show you the power, the late game sweep, what we've all. Since uh, everybody does have abilities here. Blizzard Edge. And he does get the, the fourth choice band of his deck. And we get demolished. Goodbye Necrozma, you were great. But you get ourselves the opening position here where we can use Tapu later for Sycamore. So we definitely draw into the card that we need. Actually, we don't even need to do that. Well played, man. Well played. Here it comes. The only thing that will stop you. And that will be Rule of Evil. <sighs> that will get ourselves the last prize cards. Bang! That's how it's done guys, this was the episode, actually the TCG Online match with Necrozma Weavile. Hopefully you guys had an awesome time, definitely check this deck out if you're playing. Yeah, this is a new season with the rotation and stuff, you'll definitely have a lot of time. It's not that expensive, Necrozma comes as a tin, so uh, definitely get, get your hands on the Necrozma tin. If you don't have Necrozmas yet, Weavile is this, just a regular rare to enjoy yourself with this deck. And I will see you guys soon enough with another TCG video on the channel soon enough. Thanks again for watching, peace.